So to start, let's talk about the three main components of an electrically conductive coating. The first component is a base polymer, such as acrylic, epoxy, polyester, silicone, or polyurethane, and makes up the body of the coating. As with many other electrically conductive materials, the key conductive properties come from metallic powder fillers. These are many of the same fillers that are used in sealants, adhesives, and elastomer gaskets, but often go through additional processing steps. And finally, coatings benefit from the addition of additives and solvents that can improve the adhesive properties, dispensability, and pot life. So there are several reasons why you would look at using a conductive coating. Maybe your customer told you that your electrical electronics package is overweight and it's cool to the functionality of the overall system. You know, maybe your multi-component circuit board has crosstalk between the chips. Maybe you just went through environmental testing and there's a mysterious powdery white substance all over your gasketed areas. You know, these materials provide an electrically conductive shield for EMI and can be used for grounding. They provide added corrosion resistance to metal substrates. And they've also been used as in HIRF or high intensity radiated fields for air frame applications. At the end of the webinar, we'll give some examples of specific applications where conductive coatings have been used, um, but this slide lists several of the generic categories. Coatings are used in nearly all markets and industries from defense and aerospace to automotive to life science and telecommunications. So additives are put into a coating solution and are meant to impact the rheology or the flow of the materials. Additives are meant to work with the various particle fillers and are used to hold those metallic particles in suspension for greater periods of time and prevent particle settling. Hard packing occurs when the particles sink and create a dense layer that separates from the binder system and can make the application process very difficult. In general, additives are added in a very small amounts, usually far less than 5% of the coating solution by weight. On the other hand, solvents are added in much greater quantities, usually anywhere from 30 to 70% by weight. Solvent blends of different evaporation speeds are used depending on the properties of the application and the specific design constraints to modify the drying time and curing time for each solution. For example, a self-leveling application would require slower evaporating solvents to allow the material to flow and settle properly. In the same vein, solvent evaporation rate can have an impact on final surface roughness as well as the viscosity of the paint during spraying. For example, overhead applications will require less dripping. Finally, in some instances, such as acrylic binder systems on plastic substrates, the adhesion properties are based on the solvent actually attacking the microscopic surface layers. A stronger solvent, such as MEK, can be mixed into a paint solution to attack the plastic and allow for greater adhesion.